I'd like to introduce you to a very bizarre folk story. A folk story so compelling and horrifying that you may not want to watch it alone. I'm talking about Night of the Bone. see, these three witches were up to no good. Their brew of bats, lizards, and frogs had conjured up a concoction that was sure to make any man crazy. And this potion was targeted for one particular group. That's right, the bones. Yes, it seemed that these bones were always in search of one thing, something to turn their blood. But today, they would find something that would be much more than ten years. Eighty-one had a fourth-grade education, which was four years more than the rest of the bombers had. Eighty-one could also write such things as the number eighty-one. The most debating one's respect from the other bombs came from his vast accounting skills. Eighty-one could always buy or find wine for little or no money, and the wine was usually quite bad. Headquarters. Let me speak to the chief. Chief. Uh, looks like I've spotted some bums over here off Pleasant Street. They appear to be eating a woman. <laughs> no, no. You've been watching too many of them phonographic movies. I mean, actually eating a woman. <laughs> One of them's, uh, gnawing on and on, the other one's cracking into some bones. Looks like a company picnic. <laughs> I think it has something to do with those three witches over on Haunted Hill. Three witches? Oh, yeah. They're the same ones that turned Mrs. Swing's dog into a turnip right there. Exactly. I think the mayor has had just about enough of this, and they take matters into his own hands. Quite a few more to this old hotel, but I think I would gather one fact in particular. Don't drink wine with a skull on the bottom. Good night, and have a pleasant evening.